Hello, everyone, and welcome back to positionspecific.com. And welcome to this defensive organization, session number four. When working in the organized states of the game, we like to use technique, skill, and game framework to really break down the details for our players. So when looking at defensive organization, an out of possession topic, we have our individual model and our team model. So individually, can the players scan? So can they see the ball, see the unit and see the danger? Can they think about their movement? So adjusting footwork and body shape in relation to where the ball and the attacker is? Can they dictate play? So can they deny, delay and deflect the opposition or force the attacker where they want them to go? And finally, can they defend? So win the ball cleanly or force the opposition into a mistake. So taking those four individual actions, we then look at our team model. So desire, personal desire to compete, to win personal duels all over the pitch, outwork and outfight the opposition. Can they collectively deny the opposition? So can they deny them space between the lines? So vertical compact. Can they deflect? Can they deflect the ball wide and fill the four nearest channels to the ball? So horizontal compactness. And again, finally defend. Collective pressure on and around the ball carrier and win the ball cleanly so we can set up an attack. Defensive organization, technical practice. This technical practice is set up in half a pitch and is a six V six plus three, including the goalkeeper. Really simple practice. So the red team are gonna to look to build and play into seven, nine and 11 who are locked into the red zone. And the white team are just gonna to look to organize themselves, defend, and then work through a couple of pressing patterns. So the first pressing pattern they're gonna work through is the nine will press and block, and the number seven will get ready to change his mark and jump onto the opposite CB. If the whites win the ball back, they're just gonna clip a pass into the goalkeeper, and then the practice starts again. The second press we're gonna work on is the number nine and 10 pressing. So again, number nine will jump onto one of the center backs, forcing the play across, and then number 10 will jump onto the opposite. Again, if the whites win the ball back, all they're looking to do is play back into the goalkeeper and then the practice starts again. Defensive organization, skill practice. So this skill practice is a direct follow on from the technical practice you've just seen. So we're working in half a pitch, but it's just gonna be a slight change in numbers. So this time it's a six V eight plus three, including the GK. So the red team are just gonna to look to build up and try and play into seven, nine and 11 who are locked into the red zone. If one of those players in the red zone decide they wanna drop into the main area, they can, and they're just gonna to look to turn and either drive into the red zone themselves or play a pass into a run on running player. The white team are just going to defend from an organized state. And they're just going to work through the pressing patterns we spoke about in the technical practice, but this time it's up to them which one they use. Again, so we're always looking for the whites to be really calculated in these situations. If the seven does decide to jump and press, always forcing the ball inside so he's got time to recover on the link pass. Again, always looking for the number nine to set the scene. This time the number 10 has decided to change and jump. Everyone else is really tight and the seven is just gonna come inside and divide the six and three so that we're locking the red team into one area of the pitch. Defensive organization, game practice. This game practice is an 11 v 11 four part game. It takes place in a full size pitch. The first game, the ball's gonna start with the coach and he's gonna pass into the red CB and we're looking to play from there. The Reds are just gonna to look to build up and score a goal as normal. And the white team are just gonna to look to be in an organized state. And then we're looking for the whites to maybe press 
from the two pressing patterns that we worked on in the technique and skill practices. Again, thinking back to our performance wheels, we're looking for the whites to work through that desire, deny, deflect and defend principles. Game two is a throwing on the halfway line to the reds. So just looking at creating different scenarios, there's this time a long ball, can we deal with that and defend it again? Game three is a throw into the reds on the opposite side of the pitch. Again, looking at the whites to be organized and then look to press from one of the pressing patterns. And then the final game is an unbalanced scenario. So in this case, the coach is just gonna play around the 11, so he's out of position. And then we're just gonna recover and defend that scenario from there. 